Welcome back, everyone. It's Park to Primera. It's episode number five, and it's been a very busy January. <coughs> Why are you coughing? What, what are you doing here? No, no, go back to your cave. Uh, you've got a lot of work to do today. We've got a double header. Why are you in my office? <sighs> what, what is this on my TV? What, what is that? Simeon, is that D Diego Simeone's son? does look quite no 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 get out editing jack this is not a stage big enough for the both of us leave <sighs> honestly who does he think he is he thinks he runs this joint although simeone could be quite a good sign on a free look this has to be our little secret he can't know that i've listened to him because otherwise i just i won't hear the end of it run the intro I mean, he's going to see it now, and I've, I've just, I've said, run the intro. Oh dear. What is going on, guys? Jack here, and welcome back to Racing. It is episode number five here of Park 2 Primera, and we've got a bumper episode today. Two matches coming your way as part of the promotion stage of the league, which sits in front of you here. Because, of course, the top three teams from our group and the group next to us, we've come together to make a super league. It turns out that the three teams in the other group have played fewer games. So the league sorting rules for this are average points. I've got a calculator out. I've tried to do some quick math i think if we beat both teams in our matches today in izara and harrow we will be guaranteed a top three spot in this next stage and as a result of that we will go marching on to the playoffs in a couple of months time but anyway since you last here it's been more busy than i expected we've jumped into the transfer market let's talk about what we've been up to so yes originally last episode i thought we'll bring in a couple of players you know a few couple of freebies that'll be our business done but it wasn't i i did some creative bookkeeping to make some moves happen. And the, well, the big move that had to happen on the outs to enable all of this was Patrick Socco has left us. He's gone to SC Juarez, uh, who play in Mexico, sold for £100,000. He wasn't really doing a great deal for us. He was one of our highest earners at the club. I just decided to cash in on him whilst we could. And well, with that money that we received, we were able to make a new addition to the team. Alongside Carlo Fernandez and Francis, who I talked about last time, both of whom have now joined the club. We made one further addition in Hardy. I think that's how I'd say his name. We've snapped him up from Barcelona. I was looking through players whose contracts were expiring. We agreed a pre-contract with them. And well, upon that being signed, there was a buy now option for £36,000. I decided to exercise it just because uh, with him being 18 years old, we didn't actually have to register him for the squad. So that was pretty convenient. Like Pablo, he falls into that category where doesn't need to be registered, adds another body to the team, obviously comes with the added bonus of the fact he is super versatile, can play on the striker position, can play on the wings, just a good player who allegedly has quite a lot of potential at this level. And whilst that is the only new deal that's happening right now that you didn't already know about, we have made some signings for next season. Yeah, we're planning ahead already. I went and looked through uh, a couple of the La Liga teams right at the top, their B teams, their youth teams, to see what players of theirs might have contracts expiring. We've got four players on their way. First of these is Pablo Ramon. Uh, he is joining us from Real Madrid. Uh, he's a really, really good technical centre-back. Dad inconsistent, which is a bit of a shame. But at 19 years old, we're signing him on £600 a week. He adds squad depth. I think he'll be a good player if we don't get promoted. If we do get promoted... I still think he's a pretty useful squad player to have. Another player that we've signed is Tony Herrero, who I feel like maybe last year in FM was like a really, really good left-back wonder kid who turned out quite good. In this save game, he looks slightly more underwhelming than I remember him being in previous FMs. We've snapped him up from Levante. Again, a free transfer. He will join us at the end of the season. Certainly on par with our current left-backs. And at 19, loads of room to grow. Cheap wages. These kind of deals, if we can get them done early are just no-brainers. And while the final of the youngsters that we've managed to pick up is Simeone, and it's you might think that's a familiar last name, Simeone being an Atleti. Yeah, well, it's Diego Simeone's son. And to be honest, he looks absolutely fantastic. Physicals and mentals maybe need a little bit of work, but for a player at our kind of level, he's got a load of room to grow. He looks very, very solid. 
And uh, yeah, a freebie again. These are the kind of deals that we need to make happen. The final of the players that we've signed, certainly perhaps the most experienced of the lot, is 27-year-old uh, Rafa Di Vicente. Uh, he actually played for Racing a couple of years ago. He played very well. It was a year where they were promoted. I think as far as experienced centre mids go, who are kind of affordable for our level, he ticks a lot of the boxes. Of course, we've lent on Ricky a lot this year, and uh, I think he's a big upgrade on Ricky. So good to get some early business done. He is the final of those four players joining us. Already kind of one eye, I suppose, cast towards the future. Now, I talked about the new additions in the team in Francis and Carlo Fernandez. Fernandez, I'll be honest, he's been a bit underwhelming, although coming in as fourth choice striker, wasn't expecting a great deal from him. Francis, on the other hand, of course, a bit of a worry when it came to his injury record. He did sprain his wrist ligament very early on in his career at the club. But so far, two assists in three matches looked really good. And he is kind of just locked down the right back position. I feel a little bit bad for Lars Gerson, who was our key player when we first took over. But to be frank... Francis is just a massive upgrade and has been a, a really big step up in the right back position. So in terms of matches since we last here, you might have clocked it when I showed the league table. We've actually lost a couple. This is not the time where I want to start slowing down. But yes, a couple of defeats to speak of. We have played seven matches since that, of course, cup defeat to Valencia. We got a win against Sociedad, drew against Real Union, and then got a win against Alaves for the month of January. And I thought that in itself was a little bit disappointing. Little did I know what was about to come. You can see here against Porto Galate, a team who we actually drew with 1-1 earlier on in the year. We lost 1-0 to them here. I'm not entirely sure how it happened. Trevor missed a penalty for us. And to be honest, we've just had issues with penalties throughout this year, missing too many. That was a disappointing defeat. But at the same time, I kind of just put it down to a bit of bad luck and moved on. We then managed to beat Amobieta 4-2. A little bit of a question mark defensively conceding two there. And while it got worse against Bill Bowles' B team, a 2-1 defeat here. And to be frank, whilst they took the chances that they had... We really didn't show up in this one. So in this match, we took the lead via Cedric. It was an early goal inside the first 10 minutes. He was lurking away at the back post. A fantastic little header for a man who can't really head the ball. Unfortunately, we know what this team is capable of. They pushed us to the wire previously. We crumbled again. Uh, I think this is exactly what happened when we took on Bill Bow earlier on this season. I think in episode number three, where we went a goal up, they pegged two back. However, on this occasion... We didn't show much fight, and after Diara gave them the lead, that's how it remained for the next hour. A 2-1 defeat, another blemish on a very good record. You can see in our most recent game against Arenas, so we did make it a 3-1 win, but ultimately, a little bit of the win knocked out of our sails. So the opposition we've got for the first game today is Izara. They have played two fewer games than us, but their record is fairly comparable. Of course, they were playing in the earlier stage in Group B. Slightly weaker division, I think, on paper. That said, we cannot afford to underestimate them. And given that our new group is obviously all sorted by average points, a win here is really, really important. In terms of team selection for today's game, the only real bit of rotation of note is the fact that Andrade is coming in at left back. Still not renewed his contract. Not sure if I'm going to now that we've got Herrero joining us, but he's in there because Lopez is injured again. Lopez is always injured. I've, just, I've made my peace with the world. He's always injured. I'm fine with it. He is on a, a slow but steady road to recovery at the moment. Elsewhere, you'll notice that Foster is not starting up front for us today. Of course, to start the year, I thought he was going to be the man... Coming back from injury, been a bit of a slow starter. And as a result, Capani, who has proven his worth so far this year, he is going to start up top for us. You may have also spotted Pablo. He's back. He's fit. He's raring to go. Of course, he got injured last episode. Missed a fair bit of football, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I think this is his first game back. Don't get injured today, please, bud. So as I already mentioned, we kind of go into this game expecting to win. I'm not sure on the exact math when it comes to the average points and bits really we're just going to try and win the two matches today and I do feel a bit sorry for editing Jack because he is going to need to do a fair bit of cutting down today because I think we're going to have a lot of goals to show and I want to keep the episode below 25 minutes unfortunately my players don't care about editing Jack four minutes in Pablo with the corner and that's landed on Matic's head he has got a lot of goals the center back this year from set pieces he has been an absolute weapon for us Matic winning the header again, down to Ricky. Now with Francis, of course, making his live commentary debut at right back. And that is a ball and a half to Capani, who could have gifted Francis his third assist in four games, but for a pretty subpar finish there, he smashed it straight at the keeper. And elsewhere, Pablo has got a knock. I'm not risking it. 
Hardy, you're coming on. The youngster signed from Barcelona. That in itself is pedigree. Let's see what he can do in his live comp debut as well. Am I just cursed? Genuinely. Am I just... I think I might just be... Salah. Right, we're on centre attacking mid number three of the game. Salah, Salah, Salah. You're coming on. I'm not sure how to say your name. You've got a lovely smile still, though. If he gets injured, I am officially out of centre attacking mids. So out of the break in this game, we are 1-0 up. We've been completely dominant in this game. Unfortunately, those couple of injuries that we've injured, uh, slight kind of shadows cast, I suppose, on what was a really, really good first half performance. But I'm going to tell the players that I'm very happy. I want to try and encourage them to keep things going, though. This game could turn on its head very quickly. I want a win. I want it to be convincing. Maybe we can do something better in this second half as well. We've, we've got a throw in early on. Ricky. You've not scored in a while, Ricky. What can you do here? He plays it to Cedric, who nods it to Capane, who tries to keep the ball in the air. Unfortunately, he heads it straight into the hands of the keeper there for them. It's another shot on target for us, though. They've actually got a chance here, though, perhaps. Bahiu to Hino Hoser. I think that's how you'd say the name. Butty bringing the ball forward for them. Matic, the goal scorer, gives away a penalty. That, not ideal. Not, I mean, we've missed a lot of penalties. I've not seen many missed against us. Can you make it happen, Crespo, in goal? No. No is the answer. He goes the right way, way to be fair to him, but Rupa slots into the bottom corner. And since we've scored, things really haven't gone to plan in this game. Oh, he was so close to getting there as well. It just creeps in at the bottom corner. A little bit annoying. Maybe we should make some changes. I'm going to take off Cabani. I'm going to bring in Foster. At the start of the year, he was the man I was thinking was going to get all the goals for us. Since his injury, just a singular goal this season. Ricky wins it to Gyabua. I've been told that's not how to say his name. I'm sorry. It's too fun saying Gyabua. I can't go back now. So much space for us to force the opposition to chase. So Hudo, aged 37, on the right wing, by the way. What a trooper he's been this year. He's pro we probably need to get him a Zimmer frame for after the game and stuff, but he's, he's holding his own at the moment. He's going to give it to Francis on the overlap, who can deliver balls of quality. He plays it short to Cejudo, who plays it to Foster. His shot is blocked. That, my friends, was a chance. Ten minutes left, and I've made all my changes here. I don't really want to go more attacking just for the risk of the counter-attack. I mean, I, I, I'll go attacking, but a draw's okay. It's kind of disappointing, but... It's what we're going to have to deal with, unfortunately. That's, it, it's another one of those draws to add to the collection where I feel like we've kind of let ourselves down there. That should be a game that we win, just on the whole. A silly penalty given away. The only silver lining really is that Haro have just lost, and I think on average points they've maybe dropped down. <sighs> Hardy's out for three to four months. I mean, you've had a good, good, good live comm debut there, Hardy. I think he lasted about a minute. Pablo's also out for six to nine days, so he might be missing for the next game. It might be a case of playing Capani at centre attack in mid. Apparently, I slammed the team. I'm going to be slamming the physio's chair in a second. The injuries this year have just been absolutely ridiculous. Villa Polos, by the way, he's also out for three months. And if you were wondering, where's Nana, Jack? Well, Nana, has, she's been sent to the retirement home. She's gone down to the B team. He's out for two to five months as well. Is our team just built of glass? Anyway, we've still got that Harrow game to come. I'm going to go forward to it. It is a week away. Apparently, it's going to be rainy. That's not what I signed up for when I came to Spain. Let's see how we get on in it. Right, time for game number two against Harrow, a team who were third on points per game, uh, and then they bottled it last game, and now they're down on 1.79. This is bizarre. I've never, ever had to deal with average points per game. I think if we win this game, we're through. I might be wrong. I mean, look, we can only beat the opposition in front of us, but with four games left, it would take a pretty monumental swing to see us slip down. Of course, a couple of injuries. Hardy's not available. Pablo's not available. So a little bit of rotation needed. Foster's going to play up top. Capani's going to play a slightly more creative role. One thing I forgot to mention is Capani has extended his loan at the club until the end of next year. And we've also been able to do the same with Gyabua. So, yeah, two players who are locked into nice long-term loans. Again, a couple more players I don't have to worry about losing at the end of the year, which is always nice. So besides that one enforced change with kind of the centre attack in mid-position needing to change and Foster coming in up top, the rest of the team I'm going to keep the same. You know, disappointing draw, disappointing to lose 
Oh, uh, well, I was going to say lose. To lose two points, let's say, based off a penalty, I can't be too disheartened by it. A, a draw's fine, kind of. I would like us to get back to winning ways before the playoffs, though. So 10 minutes gone. It's been a pretty quiet opening to this game. They're lumping the ball forward here to Prol. And notice they're playing quite a narrow shape. We actually met these guys, you may remember, in the Cup, where they played this narrow diamond formation. On that occasion, we beat them 4-1 in the first round of the Copa del Rey. But that was at our stadium. This pitch is a little bit smaller than our pitch. So as a result, um, it might be a, maybe just a tiny little bit more tricky, I suppose, to abuse them in the wide areas with all the space that this kind of formation inevitably leaves kind of I guess, open for us to exploit. Perez, though, bringing it forward for them just inside our half. Plays it back. Lumped forward. Man, John is there, and it's offside. The flag is raised. Do not celebrate. Crespo, breathe a sigh of relief. You were very slow off the line there. And, uh, well, it would have been a really nice goal. It was not far off either. A very, very marginable. The keeper was in no man's land. But, well, the linesman's come to the rescue. Been a fair few of these highlights start with their goal kicks. I don't know if that's a case of I should be annoyed that we're having wasteful efforts that go out for goal kicks, or if I should use that as a sign for optimism that momentum is maybe on our side as Capani is Fred through. Pulls it out to Foster, who lays it off to Cejudo. That is a lovely, lovely goal. The Trek Cortista just ghosting in from out on the right-hand side, finding some space. Capani, obviously playing in a deeper role today as kind of the playmaker in the team. He looks a natural there, doesn't he, after that? I thought as he pulled it back to Foster, Foster might shoot, but a really unselfish pass left the goal well, gaping open, and Sahudo he tucks it away. He's got a lot of goals this year. I'm a little bit gutted that I can't talk him out of retirement. And while speaking of the devil, he puts the ball into the box, and this time Foster repays the favour. They've assisted each other. Half an hour gone, 2-0 up. We've already scored more than we did last game. We've not looked nearly as threatening. Maybe this game's going to go just a little bit better. That, though, fantastic header. 2-0. Matic playing it forward to Cejudo. Francis on the overlap. Don't get injured, Francis. I know you're injury prone, but you are very, very good. I can't afford to have any more injuries. Ricky, Cejudo. I'm, I'm not sure why he's not shot there, but we've still got the ball. Let's not criticise the decision-making. Andrade hits the post. So at half-time, 2-0 up. We've been the better team. That is undeniable. After that disallowed goal, they've not really done anything since. So at the risk of inviting complacency, I'm just going to tell the players I'm delighted. We're using the wide area as well. The fullbacks getting in on the overlap is definitely kind of, you know, an area that we can look to exploit. You can see here, Francis, just a lot of space to find an uncontested pass to Cejudo, who plays it forward to Foster, who could be looking for his second of the game. He is going to get his second of the game. He's doubled his tally for the season inside the first 46 minutes of this match. And that was a really, really cheeky finish. A little dink over the keeper. Things that we love to see. Played forward, great touchdown, takes it in his stride. The defence can't catch up. The keeper, well, he goes down low. Foster goes up high. Ricky to whip in a ball as well here. Could he have a hat trick? Not yet. Not yet he can't, although plenty of time, Lyle. Just relax into it. And Well, from one highlight into another, I'm getting giddy now. I'm getting excited. That first game, it didn't do anything for me. It didn't get the juices flowing. I can taste blood. I want more. Borja. I mean, look, still, still got to show them some respect, lads. Wake up. Andrade to Cedric, who plays it inside. The row gets it away. It's highlight after highlight after highlight right now. I feel like I'm watching match of the day. Andrade, Cedric, he's through. He's going to tuck it away. And again, the fullback actively involved, this time on the left-hand side. Cedric, ninth assist for the season, playing as an inside forward on support. That's really not a role I've used much this year at all. I mean, has anyone used an inside forward on support? Answers on a postcard. Either way, he puts it into the back of the net. Not sure about the celebration. He puts his hands on his hips like he's a catwalk model. It's not, not doing it for me. I mean, we don't look like slowing down here. We're just, we're just going for the throat here. I don't know what's possessed our team today. I think they've taken that previous result personally. Yabua to Ricky. You've not scored in a while, Ricky. Maybe today's the day. Francis on the overlap. Tries to get into the middle. It's blocked. It falls to Foster. It falls down to Cedric. He's on for a hat-trick as well now. It's 5-0. And I have no idea where this performance has come from. Absolutely none. Francis out on the right-hand side, pulls it in. I thought the cross itself was a tad disappointing. The shot blocked by Foster, who was going for the hat-trick, but luckily for us, it's fallen to Cedric, who makes it five, and it was probably already over a little while ago. 
I now feel like it really is over. Maybe we should make some subs. Right, I've made some changes. I've basically taken off the players who I think are quite important for us and who I don't want to get injured. So, Anigo's come on, Bustos and Martin Salah have also come on for us. Could be one last highlight in this game. I mean, they're going to hit the woodwork, but that doesn't matter. The clean sheet remains intact. It's going to finish 5-0 here. Good little performance. Foster and Cedric probably both going to feel a tad disappointed not to get their hat-tricks. You can see the league table here. We are up to 50 points. Foster was on form. He picked up man of the match. 10 games unbeaten away from home. Maybe home advantage is our issue. Maybe it's home disadvantage. The pressure of playing in front of fewer fans works out in our favour. You can see with that result, our average points per game goes up to 2.27. Uh, I may be incorrect, but I think we've only four games left of the season. Yeah, we've only four games left of the season. I think we are going to be making it to the promotion stages. So with that in mind, I think that's when we'll be back tomorrow. Playoffs. It's about to get serious. The knockout games are going to begin. Winner takes all. If we do lose in the playoffs, we go up into the newly formed third division. Still, it is, it is a new division we go into. It's just because it's this weird year in Spain. Whoever decided in Spain to change everything up, I hate you for doing it. It makes it so much more complicated. But anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up things from me today. Next episode, we'll have the playoffs. I also think we're going to have our youth intake coming in. So if that isn't a reason to tune in, I don't know what is. Hopefully, it's going to be a good little one. I'll show you the preview to get you a little bit excited. It says Golden Generation. Sometimes it says this and it's not. Sometimes it says it and it really is. Please, football manager, on this occasion, be an actual golden intake. That's that's what I want. Give me the golden generation. That's all that FM players want and it's disgusting. It's all I want. Will we get it? Tune in tomorrow to find out. Thank you for watching today. If you have enjoyed the video, do drop a like on it. And other than that, it is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. The playoffs, they're coming, ladies and gentlemen.